Look, most women would never leave home without putting on a little bit of makeup, maybe a splash of lip colour, but new research suggests that bright lipsticks in particular contain chemicals linked to allergies, muscle problems and even low fertility. So how do you know if the colours we use to brighten our little faces are actually harming our bodies? Here to tell us more is naturopath Nicole Belsma. Morning to you. It's an interesting Morning. one. What chemicals are in makeup and what are the health concerns associated with them? Well, firstly, they did recent research to show that up to a third of mascaras contain bacteria. And this is because there's bacteria in the eye. So when you're using your mascara, you can contaminate the brush. And therefore, it's very important that women discard their mascara at least every three months. Other chemicals are things like heavy metals, like lead. In fact, the US Food and Drug Administration conducted a survey this year of 400 lipsticks and found lead in various degrees throughout most of these lipsticks, including including those marketed as natural. Now lead isn't something that is added as an ingredient to lipstick, rather it is found naturally in the mine pigments, which is why it was also found in many of the natural lipsticks. And if you consider that women who wear lipstick on a regular basis could absorb or swallow up to 1.5 kilos of lipstick in a lifetime, that's quite a lot. Other chemicals are things like preservatives, like triclosan and parabens. Parabens are a concern in getting a lot of attention in Europe. They're now looking at phasing it out of uh, consumer products because parabens are commonly found in breast tissue, especially in women with breast cancer. Other chemicals are nanoparticles. They're generally found in makeup that has an SPF rating for sunscreen and the adverse health effects of these nanoparticles are essentially unknown because there's been so limited research on the chronic health effects of this. The last of the ingredients in makeup that are a concern are fragrances. And the problem with fragrances is that they're lung and skin irritants. They often cause skin irritation. And also many of them contain hormone disrupting chemicals. In fact, the American Contact Dermatis uh, Dermatitis Society voted fragrances as allergen of the year in 2007. All right, Nicole, you're scaring the absolute daylights out of most of us who are sitting here with makeup and listening. What mm. do we do? You've got some tips for women when they buy those. We'll bring those up on screen and I'll just get you to run through it. But basically, carefully read all the ingredients. You mentioned they're avoiding fragrance. You'd mentioned the mascara one. Um, pregnant women avoid tinted lippy. Very important because there are varying degrees of lead. Lead, there is no legislation to restrict the lead content in lipstick and as I indicated it is found naturally in the mine pigments. So pregnant women particularly should not be wearing tinted lipstick unless it comes from brands that have, that have tested for lead content in each batch. As, because most manufacturers don't do this, it's, it's an expensive process. We, pregnant women particularly should actually just use lip balms made from vegetable oils. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing, the Danish government in 2006 launched a campaign, a preventative campaign warning pregnant women not to wear makeup, cosmetics or hair dyes because of the research they were doing of the hormone disrupting chemicals in these products. Oh gee, wow. there are a lot of warnings out there, aren't they? Uh, that last one on our list, avoid powder or spray makeup. A lot of people would use powder. What's the problem? The powder sprays, the quickest way to get a chemical in the body is to inhale it. That's because there's only two cells between the external air and the blood within the body. So when you inhale products, it gets into the systemic circulation or the blood very, very rapidly. And once it's there, it can reach vital organs um, and it can cross the blood-brain barrier and get through the placenta. Particularly nanoparticles, which as I said, we really don't know the adverse health effects of absorbing these nanoparticles into our body. All right. I kind of don't know what mm. we can do because you, you, a lot of those things you don't want to avoid altogether, but obviously mm. quite scary. Look well, at the with, ingredients. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah. Okay. With makeup, can I just say, with makeup, there are good brands out there and I've listed them in my book, Healthy Home, Healthy Family. Oh, good. Okay, okay well, we'll yeah. have a look. That'd be great. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Nicole. And Thank a lot you. of products are paraben and sulfate free. I've been buying some of those myself. So you, we are on the cusp of something, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Watch out. It's Koshy.